I wish I had a new movie to watch. Oh, cool. Somebody just sent me a new movie to watch. What are the odds? All right, all right. Looks promising, looks promising. Okay, okay, down with that. Who's the director? Who directed this? Uh, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> Dawn of the Beast is brought to us by director Bruce Wimple and stars Adrian Burke and Anna Shields. We follow a group of college students and their professor that venture off into the wild searching for Bigfoot. Or at least signs of Bigfoot. So do they find what they're looking for? Yes, they do. And a whole lot more. Because apparently out in these woods not only is a Bigfoot lurking around, but the Wendigo as well. So when the Wendigo and his window when Windogans, Windig, Windigans, Windowians, Wind, 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 his minions attack the cabin that they're staying in. It's up to them to figure out how to get out and hopefully survive the night. Dawn of the Beast is third in a series by Bruce Wimple concerning these creatures. First there was Monstrous concerning the Bigfoot, then The Retreat concerning the Wendigo, which I have not seen, and then this movie, which is about both of them. So it's kind of like the Godzilla versus Kong of this universe. That's really giving it a lot more credit than it deserves though. The director of this film, Bruce Wimple, directed one of my most hated films of 2019, Lake Artifact. I'm not gonna get into it here because I'll start to rant, but if you're interested in my thoughts on that movie, check my channel because there is a review there. Suffice to say, I didn't like that movie too much. His follow-up Monstrous featuring the Bigfoot I did see, but I didn't really have any desire of doing a review for it. While admittedly I did think the movie was better than Lake Artifact, that's not really saying much. I still didn't think Monstrous was that great either. So when this movie showed up in my inbox, initially I didn't know that it was the same director. It wasn't until I started watching it that I saw some things that kind of clued me into that fact. So I paused it, I checked out who directed it, and I looked at his filmography, and this is the part that I went, fuck. Not being one to not finish what I start though, I finished this bitch, and I gotta say, it's better than the other movies. Or at least the ones I've seen. I haven't seen The Retreat, but I haven't really heard good things about that one either. Not that great, but it is better. I will say that this one is at least watchable. It's still got some goofy ass characters and shit in it that you just kinda gotta look past. Well, I mean, I guess you don't have to. You could just turn the fucking thing off. But if you're gonna actually watch the movie, some of that shit you just gotta live with and work past it. About the first half of the movie is more or less throwaway. Not a whole lot happens. I find this to be a common trend in Wimple's films that I have seen. He's got long stretches of people just talking and I guess character building, but you don't really know much about the characters. It's not very good character building. I appreciate him at least attempting to build character, but it doesn't change the fact that the end result is just kind of boring. There's not a lot of interesting stuff coming out about these characters, probably because these characters aren't very interesting. However, once you get to about the halfway point of the movie, it does pick up considerably, and especially the last parts of the film. The final third of this film, I actually, dare I say, had a fairly good time with. It's ridiculous as all hell and just really out there, especially the very end of the movie, but that doesn't change the fact that I was having a decent time with it. It seems like this time around, Wimple and Co. decided to just accept the fact that this is a ridiculous premise and roll with it. They stopped trying to be so serious and just dove headfirst into the ridiculousness and it definitely worked, especially in the second half of the film. Now, as I said a moment ago, this is not saying that this movie is great. It's not. This isn't really that great of a movie, but compared to what he has given us in the past, it is leaps and bounds better. Now, does that make it worth watching? Maybe. Like, if you don't have anything else to watch and it shows up and you're not really gonna pay much for it or really pay anything at all for it, then yeah, I mean, I guess it might be worth checking out, especially if it's already going and you kind of pick it up in the middle, then yeah, it's definitely worth it because it's kind of got some goofy, ridiculous fun there in the end that's at least entertaining enough. Overall, the story and execution, while they are pretty weak in the beginning, once you get over that hump, it is at least entertaining. It ain't great, and it's goofy and campy as all get out, but it is still entertaining after that middle portion. Now, the performances here fall in line with what we've come to expect from Wimple and his 
previous efforts. And what I mean is that they're fairly inconsistent. Not so much the individual players are inconsistent, but the ensemble as a whole. You've got some actors that do a decent enough job. They're fine. But then you've got some that play it real big and campy, and the two just don't mesh. Our main players here, though, are fine for the most part. There's nothing egregious, nothing that's gonna make you just groan and roll your eyes. Well, at least not too much. There are some side characters that are pretty fucking corny, but at least our main characters are decent enough. There's nobody that really stands head and shoulders above everybody else, but they're just, for the most part, all fine. Now, the technical department of things is one of Wimple's strong points. All of his films, while I can't say I'm a really big fan, have had a really good eye for special effects, especially low-budget special effects. He's shown that he's able to take just a little bit and make it look like a lot. The creature effects here are all pretty good, especially the Wendigo. It is a pretty neat design, and it is implemented very well. Now, the Bigfoot isn't quite as good as the Wendigo, but it is still pretty good, especially considering this being a low-budget film. There's a couple of artistic choices they made with it that I personally wouldn't have gone with, but as a whole, the effect, the creature itself, looks pretty good. The only thing effects-wise that really stood out to me that wasn't so hot, no pun intended, was some fire closer to the end, which started as real fire and then clearly turned into CGI fire. It's fairly short-lived though, so not that big of a deal. Everything else from the technical side in the film is fine. It's just what you expect from a movie. There's nothing particularly special about his shooting style, but there's nothing bad about it either. It's just what you expect from a movie. Wimple's films have never really suffered from technical issues. His problem has always been narrative issues, and that's how it works out here as well. He just did a little bit better in the narrative department this time around. As a whole, from a technical perspective, the movie is pretty solid. Guys, Dawn of the Beast was, surprisingly enough, actually not too bad. Was it great? No, but it wasn't terrible either. It's a watchable, enjoyable enough little creature feature. While the story does start out pretty weak, it does pick up and become pretty entertaining in those ending ridiculous scenes. The performances as a whole are decent and the effects are all pretty good. And while I can't recommend that you run out and pay for this thing, if it does show up on your streaming platform of choice, it is absolutely worth checking out on streaming. Across the street. I will give director Bruce Wimple this much. It does seem like his films are progressively getting better as they go along. Just slowly getting better. So if the guy just keeps on making movies, eventually he might end up making a fucking masterpiece. This ain't it though, but it is worth checking out if you ain't got nothing else to do for the night and you're looking for an entertaining enough creature feature, or at least the second half. So there it is guys, my review of Dawn of the Beast. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy Aspen. <laughs>